Hey, what's up? John Shred here, and today we are talking about the performance, the workstation specific performance of the 3090 Ti. We'll look at software packages such as Adobe Photoshop, Premiere Pro, Blender, and Unreal Engine 5. I'll even toss in a couple gaming benchmarks just at the end, but stay tuned. Welcome back. If this is your first time to the channel, thanks for joining. I like to talk about video cards, new technology, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, today, uh, I mean, I've been using this 3090 Ti uh, for about a month now. And in the back of my mind, I've been trying to figure out, is this card worth the money? It is a Canadian, a $230, $200 card Canadian. And I compare it to something like a 3080, which goes for, I don't know, 1300 bucks right now. And to me, I wonder, okay, well, the 3090, 3090 Ti models, they're designed for workstation performance because they have the additional 24 gig of RAM. So today is going to find out, looking at all these different software packages to better understand, is it worth the extra money? Now, if you want to jump directly to a particular part in the video, you're interested only in Blender, use the chapter system below and you can hop right there. But I want to pause for a moment before we look at the benchmarks because this past month has been crazy and, and a lot has gone on. Uh, for one, the GPU shortage is over and stock is starting to return. I picked up this card pretty much right when it was happening. Uh, in the past year and a half, I can usually get a card, do a review and then sell it very quickly. It's not the case. Uh, I have, I've had this listed online now uh, for a few weeks now and no one is interested. So uh, something to keep in mind when it comes to buying high end, even higher end video cards, the market shrinks even lower for people who want to buy them. Now, what else has happened? Well, we got some news that the 4090, 4080s may be released in July of this year. So, I mean, I bought this card maybe late April, early May, and if I had the choice now, okay, spend $3,200 on this card or wait a few months and get a 4090 for a similar price, given the leaks, it's supposed to have twice the performance. So, I mean, I'm in a real pickle with this card right now. Yes, it's new, it's great. It is the, the best of the best GPUs out there, but knowing that the 4000 series is coming shortly, Mm. Oh, and, and lastly, if you are in the mining game, I, I did do a video about this, the Ethereum hash rates, which gets about 130 mega hash. Uh, at the time, I was comparing it to 23080 light hash rates, which would get up to uh, somewhere similar, 100, 140, 145 mega hash, uh, but the efficiency was better on this card. So I thought to myself, maybe it's better. But what else happened this month? The light hash rate got got figured out, cracked. So now every single 3080 can now mine at approximately 100 mega hash at 250 watts. So once again, for mining, this card is obsolete. Okay, let's get into the benchmarking. Let's start with the Adobe products first. Uh, Adobe Photoshop uh, is a good one. Now I found a company, uh, Puget Bench. Uh, what they do is they're a high end essentially hardware system company that build high-end workstations for you if, if you want one. One of the first things you'll notice about a computer from Puget Systems from the moment that you turn it on is how fast and clean everything is. So they have a lovely benchmark system uh, that you can run uh, in Photoshop. It's a nice plugin that you installed and it'll kind of run against your system. Now how it works is it works against almost like a test bench system that they have. In the case of Photoshop, it's an i9 9900K with a 2080, 64 gigs of RAM, and a one terabyte Samsung 960 hard drive. So if you were to match that system, they'll give you a benchmark score of 1,000. So if you're above 1,000, you're doing better than that. Below, uh, you, you get the point. So my test batch system uh, is a Ryzen 5900X with 32 gigs of 3200 megahertz RAM. Um, 
with, of course, a 3090 Ti. I also did all these tests with my 3080 so I can compare the difference. Now, what happened with the scores was very interesting because when it came to Photoshop, there was hardly any difference. So uh, I'll start with the 3080. It came in at 1109, okay, versus the 3090 Ti, 1126. So only a few points more uh, for the 3090 Ti which to me says, okay, not, not worth the upgrade. I did notice though that when using Photoshop, the test itself was very, very RAM intensive. Not the RAM intensive, but RAM intensive. I was pushing, it was grabbing at least 22, 23 gigs of my 32 gig RAM to, uh, to run the test. Okay, let's jump over to Premiere Pro. Now, same, same company, Puget Bench, uh, same software to do the, the benchmarking. Their test system though is very similar to mine with a 5900X, a 3080, 64 gigs of RAM, okay, so double the RAM, and that same nine, one terabyte 960 hard drive. So what I found was the 3080 got 1,069 for a score, and the 3090 Ti got 1,074, so only five points more. So to me, pretty much identical. I noticed throughout the test, the GPU wasn't even working that hard at all. Um, and to me, even just using the card in Premiere Pro to edit videos like this, I don't see any difference. Now, I didn't get into render times. It's the only thing I'm, I'm, I was missing. But from a day-to-day -day use of, you know, in, in, the, in the sequence and how it flows with 4K footage, I didn't notice any difference. Okay, let's jump into Blender. This is where we finally start to see some differences. Okay, so looking at the overall score for a 3080, we got 4,892 for a score. Meanwhile, the 3090 Ti ended up with 6,034. Now, so that's about a 20% increase, which is what we're seeing with the gaming benchmarks as well. <sighs> Worth spending an extra thousand eh, dollars who knows um, that's using the blender benchmarking tool now what I thought to myself I said okay well maybe let's let's maybe look in and see at rendering using blender using some of the samples that blender can provide I figure these might be some high-end scenes and, and and we can see what the results are before we get into those results if you are liking this video or this type please please give it a thumbs up Thanks. Okay, looking at blender render times. I ended up doing with two different sample uh, sample scenes. Uh, one was a barber shop scene. Um, and then I had the option of rendering it with the GPU or GPU plus CPU. Now it's very interesting because when I did it just GPU only with the 3090 Ti, uh, it was still by far the fastest, but it was faster by just doing the GPU. As soon as I tagged on the CPU, it ended up slowing it down. Now, when I did those same tests with the 3080, it was the opposite. When I added the, uh, the CPU of my 5900X in with the 3080, it sped up render times, which just tells me that this, this 3090 Ti is far more powerful than its counterpart in the CPU when it comes to rendering, and it's just don't even bother with it. So uh, when it comes to render time, let's say I took just the 3090 Ti rendered with that, then said, okay, no problem. Let's slap the 3080 in and rendered with the 3080 plus the CPU, the 5900X. It ended up that it was still slower, still slower by, by 20% or so. So, I mean, not the end of the world, but once again, the card's faster. Is it that much faster? That's up to you. So uh, it was very similar with, with both different scenes. The other one was this called Lone Monk. Uh, it was this temple kind of kind of idea, and, and I did I did surrenders. I'll, I'll show it. I'll show it on screen. Okay, now the last workstation type application uh, that I'm testing is Unreal Engine Five. If you haven't seen some of the amazing features and, and, and stuff that's coming out from. From Epic right now, Unreal Engine 5 is just mind blowing when it comes to game engines. I thought to myself, okay, let, what can I do? What can I load up? Uh, and they have a 100 gig Valley of the Ancients demo, 
that is just, it's, it's mind boggling, really cool. Let's load that up, see how it runs, see how it plays and feels with both different cards. So on the 3080, I'll start with that this time. When I actually started the demo, it had frame rates of, I mean, between 45 and 60 uh, FPS, which is, which is not bad. And what I noticed though, is that it used VRAM of about 9.2 gig. And I was wondering, hmm, is that because card only has 10 gigs, that, that's where it's capped out. So I tossed in the 3090 Ti, did the same thing. Frame rates ended up much better as expected, sitting between 60 and 70 FPS, once again, 20% boost. Uh, but the VRAM still only used 9.2 gigabytes of RAM. I was really hoping that this would, would, would use more of that 24 gigabytes of VRAM and therefore just blow it out of the water but that wasn't the case. So, I mean, I don't know how crazy your scenes are in Unreal, how, if you're running 8K textures, uh, I mean, but it really makes me wonder, do you need a 3090, 3090 Ti for workstation work when a 3080 is pretty darn good? Now, please leave a comment below if you have a specific case. Maybe there's a scene you have, send me a copy of it. I would love to see where the 3090 just blows a 3080 out of the water, most likely just due to the VRAM restrictions. Okay, so those are the workstation performance, but what about, I did mention that I would talk about a bit of gaming. I did run through 3D Mark, uh, three different uh, tests. I went through Time Spy, Port Royale, and Fire Strike Ultra just to understand the, the, the difference between them if you were to game. It was what I expected, 15 to 20% difference. I'll post some, some of the stats here on, on screen. Uh, I also did the Final Fantasy XIV uh, benchmark that I like right now. And the only difference is that when I had it running at um, 3440 by 1440, which is my, my ultra wide, uh, monitor when I had it set at high settings the 3080 and the 3090 Ti literally got pretty much the same score but when I cranked it to maximum settings so you know ultra high kind of textures for everything that's when the um, the 3090 Ti did pull ahead um, but not by much like like 10 percent so what what does this mean what did I conclude is a, a 10 gigabyte 3080 all that different than the best of the best 24 gigabyte 3090 ti eh, i mean it depends what you're using for if you're, you're in photoshop and premiere pro didn't really notice the difference sure in blender unreal engine you're getting a little more 3d in there uh, there's definitely more room for growth when it comes to render times absolutely uh, the 3090 ti for rendering helps and that's why I see people using SLI two three cards all together to really increase those render times now uh, when it comes for gaming 100% not worth it uh, and, and you probably already knew that coming into this video uh, this is mainly performance for for workstation applications so I myself do not use a workstation application daily just for these videos I am going to go back to using my 3080 Strix which I still think is the best all around card bang for your buck. So, I mean, if you're using a 3090, a 3090 Ti, and I didn't cover something, or, or, or there's an area that you'd like to know more about, please leave a comment. Uh, I'm always here to learn uh, alongside with you. So please, uh, let's chat. And uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe and stay tuned for the next one. Without, being with you,